Hey YouTube, uh, welcome back. Um, I still didn't receive all my parts. Didn't receive most of the things, but as you can see, I put cardboard boxes between each one since the shrink wrap haven't arrived yet. And I got these uh, distributor block, which is supposed to be able to handle 150 amps because I just finished putting all the battery packs together, connected all the BMS. And then I also connected the built-in thermistor, but I only connect one of the thermistor from the battery pack because I think it reduced the resistance by half when I connect them together in parallel. So I'm just using one right now and that's sitting on top of the BMS here. And I'm going to go ahead and probably just give this a try, but I connected it. They're all fully charged. Um, the only issue I see right now is uh, when I connect the thermistor, the voltage drops a little bit like sometimes it drops to 0.5 of a volt difference from the P minus and the B minus but I think because it's on a hot day and the thermistor is lower down lowering the voltage I think that's how it works I'm not too sure but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try later and as you can see the whole pack together cardboard up strapped together pretty heavy but I'll connect it to my solar inverter later and then give it a try hopefully most of my parts will come back in or come in and I can start wrapping this correctly uh, this is just a quick short video of what's going on I know I haven't posted a video about this for a while but hopefully you know this works out the way it should work doesn't seem to have any issue or anything right now. Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next one when I plug everything up to the inverter. Okay, back in the garage. Connected the battery together. I connected with a supposedly 6 gauge cables this time. So it goes from 10 gauge to 410 gauge to 1 6 gauge and then into the solar inverter. Reading 28.8 volts right now I'm not sure if it's putting any amps from the solar right now since I haven't done any they're basically fully charged well wow. 5 amps into the battery uh, 146 watt let's see if that's correct let's see Yeah, about 6.10 amps going in and coming out because I think it pulls about 1 or 2 amps itself to power itself on or something like that. But here's all the connection. I did this tab things, this uh, Waco kind of connector so I can plug in the bat go battery monitor when I need to. And not only because I only have like one cable right now and I don't want it to be per permanently attached to it. So I can get a reading. I just swap the connections when I need to get the reading from the battery monitor. As you can see, oh, I think I'm going to have to redo this connection here. I can see it's either loose or just a little longer than normal. Uh, let's see which one is this one. Okay, yeah, I'm probably going to switch this out to make a better connection. Or it's probably good. Oh, nope, nope, it's not my fault I pulled it out now I'm gonna have to get it going again okay well I'll fix that in a little bit I'm going to unplug everything again probably I don't want to try to short anything out but here it is with the cardboard box because the wrap hasn't arrived yet and I have uh, the heat gun I'm just gonna put it on oh no I'm let me switch this out before I put in the heat gun all right uh, I'll be right back Okay, I fixed it. It wasn't the easiest when the batteries are this close together. I couldn't get a screwdriver or anything in there. Almost had to take everything apart, but I managed to wiggle through and secured it, secured it down. So hopefully we're all good. Uh, I was gonna turn on the heat gun, but uh, let me just check a few things here.
system's barely turning back on right now. This way. Four or five. Back to the six six point two amps. Let's see if individual ones. 1 1.7, 1 1.3, 1.1, 1 and 1.4. I'm not sure how it distributes everything. I don't know how it divides or who gets more. I think it's probably based on the resistance level. So that's probably what's, what's happening. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this heat gun. I'm just always changing to the wattage. Oh, forgot to turn on the inverter. waiting for it to click on here. There we go. Inverter on. I turn on the heat gun. 1.4241. I'm gonna put the heat gun down so it doesn't burn. I'm gonna test everything else here real quick. Pulling 50 amps. 12 amps on the individual batteries maybe. Yeah, 12 to 13 amps per battery. Uh, one battery is only getting, taking 10 amps. Yeah, so 12, 12 and 10 amps on one of the battery. The third pack here. I'll probably check the connection and everything. Make sure it's tight. Go on the negative side. 12.7, 12.8, and 13.1. So one of the batteries, it's a little, it's not dividing around the other ones. The other one seems to be getting 12. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or anything. But it's just off by one to two amps. Line's not getting hot. Let's see if I can turn something else on. Oh, I don't have it connected right now. It's at 1.6 kilowatts right now. Sixty, fifty-eight amps, sixty amps. Cable seems to be fine. Twelve, thirteen, fifteen. Yeah, the third pack's pulling less amps than the rest of them. I'm not sure why. I thought it would probably try to divide it evenly, but like I said, it's just based on maybe my wiring or some sort of resistance problem with the battery pack. But I think that's still within the range that I'm looking for. But as you can see, I don't have any more things to plug in currently, so I'm just gonna stop here, maybe try to find something else. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, just let me know. I will be putting a circuit breaker on this. This is just testing. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.